Hi everyone, I am back for our second video in the butterfly series. I just washed off the one stroke butterflies I did in part one, so I have some residual glitter on my face, but I wanna go ahead and get into our second video, which is going to be sponged butterflies. So uh, please like and subscribe. If you haven't seen part one, go back and watch that first and then stick around for part three, which is going to be elevated abstract floral butterflies. So taking all your butterflies to the next level. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and follow me on all avenues of social media. I love interacting with all of you. And let's go ahead and get into it. So I love painting one stroke butterflies. I think they're really, really easy and simple, but I have to admit the number one request I get on the job is a rainbow butterfly. And to me, that means a rainbow cake butterfly. So even though I skirt the system sometimes and I'll do a one stroke butterfly and then I'll put a rainbow in the middle and be like, it's a rainbow butterfly because I don't want to get sponges out and it works. No kid has challenged me yet. Uh, traditionally, if someone wants a rainbow butterfly, they want a full rainbow cake butterfly. So I usually grab three of my favorite cakes. These are all fusion Leanne cakes with the neon and these are well loved as you can see. They're so bright and so beautiful and I love using them. So I'm gonna pick one of these uh, to use and then I still have a one stroke element to my uh, sponged cakes that I do, more of an outline. So I'm gonna show you that and talk about alternatives as well. So I'm going to choose one of these and get my sponge loaded up and we'll get started. Okay, so I also grabbed this other rainbow cake that's more pastel. I think I'm going to do two different cakes on either side and show you a few different techniques. One side I'm going to use a half round sponge and then the other side I'm going to use a petal uh, sponge to show you guys the difference and how this might help you to do a petal sponge, um, especially if you are just starting out. Um, it can be a good kind of hack and trick for you to get your butterflies uh, looking a little bit more professional. So I've mentioned this in videos before, um, but it's really important to load your paint correctly and well the first time. If you skip that step or you don't fully load your brushes or sponges as well as you could, then you're really making your life harder in the long run. So it is really worth taking the time to load everything really, really well. If you load your sponges and your brushes well the first time, the less you are going to have to go back into your paint over and over and over again. Um, another thing I wanna point out with loading this sponge that has edges and a flat area is I'm not just loading one edge or one corner of the sponge, I'm loading all of it. So I'm making sure to get paint on both edges and the flat side, which does take a little bit longer than if I was just trying to load one edge of the sponge. And I'm, I want the entire sponge loaded because of how I'm going to manipulate this sponge in order to get the butterfly shape down that I want. So it uh, is worth it to me and important to me to get all the paint on there. If I get my sponge loaded and I notice there's some dry spots, like this darker purple is not quite getting loaded, then I spray the cake just on that dark purple and I focus on pushing that corner of the sponge down to pick up that paint so I get really, really good coverage. All right. Um, it's not a hard fast rule, but I typically start with the lighter color on the inside corner of the eye. Always keeping in mind our focal points. If you need a reminder on the focal points, go back to that first video in the series if you have not watched that already. So lighter color on the inside. And what I'm going to do is kind of pinch and turn my sponge. So I pinch it with my thumb in the middle place that lighter color down on the inside corner of my eye and you're going to notice I'm not doing the entire sponge flat. 
I'm gonna start with just the inside color and inside corner and I'm going to press like I'm pushing uh, into a stain or I'm trying to clean a stain. I'm pressing and pushing the paint out of the sponge. As I get coverage in the corner of my eye and that comes out, then I start pressing the middle part of the sponge down. The whole time thinking about the shape of the butterfly, I want a higher peak here and then I want to go in towards the focal point down into the focal point of the corner of my eye. So I'm pressing the middle down once I have good coverage there and it's not going to be a perfectly flat edge because this is a sponge so that's okay because we're going to clean that up with our line work. Then I'm going to get the top of that color down, press, press, press. I can kind of clean up that edge. I've got nice coverage, I'm not muddy, so I'm gonna stop. Now I'm gonna pinch my sponge even further, get it really close. I'm lining up where that lighter color is, and then I'm just gonna press, 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 and get some of that rainbow color right there on the outside, stipple those together, and there we go. I have the shape I want for the top wing of my butterfly. You're gonna notice a couple things. It's going up and towards the middle of the uh, left side of the forehead, right? And this part is not going all the way out here. If I would have just taken my sponge and taken the flat part of it and went like this, I would have color all the way out here. That leaves me no room to manipulate the edge and finish off the shape that I want. So you have to really pinch and manipulate your sponge to get the coverage you want and get the shape you want. This takes a lot of time. I was not good at this in the beginning at all. I did these huge sponged areas and then found it really hard to like etch in, you know, or line out the butterfly because I was sponging too big. So it can be a little uh, hard at first to realize that you really want to go small. You want this area to be pretty compact, but in the right shape. All right. Um, while that's wet, you could go ahead and spray it with glitter. I always spray mine with fine glitter because it adds so much shine and is so, so pretty. Um, if I was not talking, I should have enough paint to do the bottom wing. But since I'm instructing and talking, this is getting dry and I don't trust that I'm going to have enough. So I'm going to spray my cake again and I'm going to reload. Um, I also, when I am going over kids' eyes with butterflies, uh, tigers, uh, my star blends, uh, little smoothie blenders like this over the eyes, I only use them once and then I put them in my dirty pile and I wash them later. When I reuse a sponge or reuse my star blends uh, little lollipop applicators, are if that entire day I'm doing stars on, a fo on foreheads for something, I will reuse a sponge or an applicator for like a couple stencils, but I don't reuse these when I'm going over the eyes. I get a new one for every single kid that comes into my chair. I'm getting so many questions about that. Um, so if you have additional questions, let me know, but wanted to clarify. All right, so now for the bottom, of the eye, I've got my paint reloaded and I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna really pinch this together because I don't want my bottom wing to be huge. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit further here, but I'm gonna use my line work and my one stroke to do that. I don't want the rainbow going all the way out here. Instead of going flat like this, I am going to angle up so you can see I'm at a little bit of an angle here under my eye and I'm going to press 
and I'm going to manipulate the sponge to go into the corner of the eye, press the middle, and then I'm just popping the outside corner. I'm pulling up and looking the whole time to see, am I overshooting myself? Do I need to stop? And there we go. In a couple movements, I have the bottom done with a nice clean gradient of rainbow. And that's the bottom wing. Stop there. It's not perfect. You can see there's almost a little bit of a stippling effect, but that's okay because we're going to line this out. So don't worry about it. Um, if you are doing this, especially at first, and you go a little too far out or you go a little too far down, you can take a wipe. A makeup wipe is preferred over wet wipes because wet wipes are really not meant for the face. So if you have makeup wipes or get a smoothie blender with a little bit of water on it and then just go in and clean up the edge. If you think it's something you can't correct with a one stroke outline or a lined outline later. If it's just the tiniest bit and you know you can go over that and you're gonna correct it when you do your line work, don't bother cleaning it up. It's an unnecessary step on the job. But when you're just beginning this, if you end up doing like this huge sponged, you know, blob, and you need to go in and go like this and do a little diamond shape on the outside to get this shape, do it. It's fine. No one's going to notice or think you're doing something wrong. and They don't know how to face paint. So go ahead and manipulate the shape uh, so you're getting what you need. Okay. All right. So from this step here, once I have a good base down with my color, I uh, spray it with glitter, make sure it's nice and glittery, and then I always do a one stroke. I prefer uh, something with a really dark edge, like this is the Nat Davies uh, Blue Wren. It's got a really dark edge. With the rainbow and with this darker purple on the outside, I tend to gravitate towards a darker blue. Sometimes I'll do like a darker purple, um, but almost always something blue with a black edge. I just think it looks better and it's kind of become my staple and it's how I, you know, how I prefer to do it. So you can play around with colors, but I always like something that's working for me. And when I pick something with a super dark edge, it is etching out that line work in a way where I don't have to go back over it. I don't have to add an additional black line or add a white outline. So to me, this is just kind of one stop, easy, on the job, um, rainbow uh, butterfly. So that's why I do it that way. Okay, as far as brushes go, you can absolutely use a three quarter inch for this, but what I prefer and use more are these smaller brushes like the half inch long that I mentioned in my first one stroke video is becoming one of my all time favorite brushes forever. Um, that is what I gravitate towards for, for this specifically. Or I love a dagger brush. A dagger brush is gonna give you a really similar uh, look. It's not too big so that it's going to completely cover up your rainbow, but it's large enough that it's gonna give you a nice etched line and it has that lovely point and those long bristles so you get a nice flow with your stroke. So I'm gonna use my favorite one, the half inch long from Blazin Brushes, and then I'm gonna take the darkest colors of this cake and I'm going to get those loaded up onto my brush. Now from here, the steps I take are very similar to my one stroke butterfly, um, almost to a T. The difference is I'm not filling it in. I'm using this as my background. So it's like, this is my reverse coloring book, you know? 
All right, so I've got that nicely loaded. I'm going to start at the top and I'm gonna pull my line down. And what I try to do, instead of starting here and then completely covering up my purple and that going away, I try to start a little bit further out so that I still have some of that purple. And then I drag the toe of that brush in. And another stroke, drag in, always focusing on our focal points. You can reload if you need to. At this point, I am gonna do another little one just because my forehead is big. And then I'm gonna go out, kind of bump it out a little bit, but not too far. And then you can give um, the child you're painting or adult or whomever it might be, some eyeliner if you want to. Um, and then of course, I always talk to them the whole time. I'm always saying, good job, keep your eyes closed, you're doing a great job, you know, keep your eyes closed, don't open, you know, <laughs> all that stuff to keep them um, with their eyes closed. Okay, so from here you have a couple options. If you want kind of a smaller profile butterfly, you can do a couple round strokes and get such a nice, like small, compact little butterfly that is like so sweet and so pretty, um, which will maybe we'll do that on this side, but I'm gonna show you what I typically do. I have really gotten into extending the bottom wing out this way, but not under the nose. So we talked about this in that first video too, and again, if you haven't watched it, go watch that one first because a lot of what I'm saying is gonna make more sense. Um, so what I've been doing is kind of over exaggerating this and I don't know why even I just have I just like it so I even went like kind of far beyond where that purple is and there's a gap but like I don't really care on the job I'm not that particular about that kind of stuff because I just don't think anybody notices especially if you're doing good work they don't notice those like little tiny things. So like if I was on the job, I wouldn't even go back and fill that in. I would just keep painting. So from here, I'm gonna go down and create like a little petal shape. And then I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna drag these lines up into my focal point. I got a little like muddy there or a little like went down like I was going here instead of here. So make sure all your lines are going up into focal points. Corner of the eye, center of the, the forehead. Okay, I think the top of my eye is dry enough that I can open it. That's kind of hard to talk with your eye closed. All right, so I do my petal shape and then Instead of starting down here and doing a curve, I'm gonna go way up here because I'm getting close. See how that's kind of close to the bottom of my nose? And I don't wanna drag this down. So even starting this stroke here is gonna make this really heavy. So I'm gonna come up almost an entire length of those bristles of the brush and do that and then I'm going to do one more little I'm going to connect these just like that and there we go I probably on the job would have just taken my heel of my brush see how that kind of blends right in and then gone like that just to fill that gap and then I, with these, still love to do my little drop down, but usually I'll switch brushes. I usually won't do it in the same color because I think it's just really fun and whimsical to do it in a slightly different color. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here I've got my brush for my one stroke uh, video. Let me use that. And usually on the job, I've got so many brushes and paints going that it's really easy to grab another color and go right down. 
just gives it a tiny bit of contrast without totally derailing myself and doing something, you know, that's making my life harder. Okay, so this is the basic rainbow butterfly that I do. I really like it, always have really gravitated towards this. Um, and I think it's very easy and fast on the job. Everyone gets really amazed by it. I do want to point out that if you look closely here, and hopefully you guys can see this on camera, there are gaps here. It is not perfect, but that is okay. I think very often as face painters and specifically beginner face painters see Instagram posts and edited beautiful photos of um, face painting and think they're supposed to do that on the job. You're not, it's not realistic. It's beautiful to see the editorial gorgeous practice that people do at home or in their studios but that is not realistic on the job face painting. You want to get uh, close, right? You want the illusion of perfect, but the illusion of perfect and it actually being perfect are two very different things. But you can see how I said we're, we'd fix it with line work. There's a lot you can fix and cover up with your line work if you're strategic about it. And on the job, you have to be because time is money and you need to be fast. So I hope that's helpful. I'm going to show you how I would add detail to this if I wanted to on the job. So for detail for this butterfly, adding a little bit of chunky glitter would always be good but I love my neon face paint and this dark blue and black combo lends itself really well to adding some like neon dots. So typically what I would do to enhance this on the job would be to add a few hot pink or hot neon dots. Um, it's very, very quick, very easy. I always do it down here too, just because I like to emphasize that little guy. You can do um, some dots in the corner of the eye if you want to. Again, it's kind of like a cool focal point thing. You can also do some cosmetic glitter right on top of the eye, like eyeshadow. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do to make this really, really pop, but it's just a matter of how much time you have. If I did have a ton of time and nobody was in my line and I had a very patient child or preteen or adult, lining this out even further with something like neon paint would be really, really cool. But I'm only gonna do that if I have like a ton of time, which sometimes I do, there are events I find myself at, you know, where there's a lot of time to kill. So if you have the time, you know, get creative and have fun with it. But more often than not, I'm uh, speed painting, I find. So go ahead and line that out. But it is a really cool effect if you have time. The other thing that you can do if you like the look of um, a lot of veins in your butterflies is you can add even more lines here. So you can pick like a couple sections and add even more detail. That's a really, really quick way to add additional detail and texture into your rainbow butterflies. So there we go. Let's do the other side with a pastel butterfly, change up the colors a little bit, and show you a different sponge technique. Okay, so if you're just starting out or you're struggling with the full uh, full half sponge version of rainbow butterflies, you can use a petal sponge and you can see the difference here if I line these up. See the difference in size? The, is gonna take up almost the entire Leanne cake and the Leanne cakes are longer than a lot of rainbow cakes so that's a lot of coverage and can be harder to manipulate. So if you're having trouble with this, 
that's normal. It's not easy. It takes a ton of practice. So using one of the petal sponges that is much, much smaller might be a good option for you. So I'm going to load up this very pastel cake with most of the lighter colors from it, and I'm gonna avoid these because I can't even get to those because my, my sponge is smaller. And I always tell people, just when you think your sponge is loaded well, load it again. You almost can't, I mean, overload it unless you use too much water. There is such a thing as too much water, but you really can't load it too well. Um, all right. So the difference between taking this sponge and pinching and manipulating it is this sponge is going to have a shape that is already working for you. So it can be incredibly helpful. So what I'm going to do is take the corner and put it down into my eye. I'm going to press at an angle at first and then I'm going to start rotating out and press down. So I'm still not pressing the entire thing just down and pushing. I'm manipulating it a little bit but I'm not having to manipulate it quite as much. I'm doing a lot of pushing and pressing and I get a nice rainbow round shape. So you can see the similarity between this shape and this shape here, only this was a lot easier. At this point, I would definitely, you know, spray it with glitter so that it's nice and, and bright and shiny. Um, but now I want to do the top. So I'm going to press the side of the sponge down. If you can see this, I'm not going flat on the sponge. I'm going on the side and the corner of the sponge and I'm going to press up because I want that nice shape of the top wing like I got on the other side. I'm just using just the corner of this. I can use, I'm running out of paint, so I'm gonna use the other corner and see how that's nice and wet. And I'm going to fill in a little bit, but I'm going to go nice, high, up. I still want that petal shape. I'm just going to dab, dab, dab until I get the shape that I want. And there we go. I've got it. Not as, don't have as much blue because I was kind of manipulating my sponge. So I just pop a little bit more blue on there, but there we go. I've got a very similar shape, but this sponge is doing most of the work for me. Where this sponge does a lot of the work for you is also going to be on that bottom wing because I am just going to get up under my eyelashes here. I am going to press down the entire sponge pretty much. Might have to still wiggle a little bit from one side to the other and you kind of push 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 like you're pushing the paint out of that sponge and go right up under the eye, stipple, 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 and there's the entire shape of your bottom wing. It is very easy. So if you are struggling with the shape of your butterflies or going too big, use this as a guide and a way to help you avoid doing that. If you want a completely different look from this, you can use a liner brush and do teardrops and drag and drop teardrops down to create the butterfly outline. It's just not how I do things on the job. It's not how I prefer. So I'm not going to do that today. Um, there are plenty of other painters that that is their style and that's how they prefer to do butterflies, but it is not how I prefer to do them. So I'm not going to show you something that I don't typically do on the job, but keep that in mind that it is an option for you to do. I am going to show you how I would outline this butterfly wing with a dagger brush and we're going to do a little bit more of a rounded butterfly than the peaks that I typically do. So I'm going to use another one of Nat uh, Davies cakes. This is Fairy Blossom. It has a really nice dark edge to it. 
uh, which I like. And I think it's gonna be a nice contrast to these blues. So I'm gonna get my dagger brush loaded up. If you are not familiar with dagger brushes or have not used them, I do have an extensive video on dagger brushes and why I love them so much. So you can go check that out. All right, so this is nicely loaded. I'm gonna start very similarly to how I started on the other side. I'm gonna drag down and create the shape that I want. The only peak I'm doing is going to be right at the top and then the rest of my strokes are going to be rounded. I'm going to drag the toe of that brush down. I'm going to keep doing that. And I'm going to do another round stroke right in the outside corner of my eye where that outside co uh, corner focal point is. That's a tongue twister. I'm getting a little bit dry, so I am going to reload my brush here. So instead of going out into this peak like I did on this side, I'm gonna keep this one a little bit tighter and closer to face. I'm gonna go round, another round stroke. I'm just making use with my brush, just cradling where that uh, sponge ended and I create a nice rounded shape. It's very simple, very sweet. I personally really want one more stroke here. Um, I don't think it looks bad that way, but it just would make me feel better to have it connected. So I'm gonna do one more stroke. See how that allowed it to line up with that just a little bit more and I'm gonna close that off just like that. So I don't think you need to do this. And if I was on the job, I probably wouldn't even notice and I would just have connected this line with this line and I think that would have been fine. But I like the idea of kind of the stair step here. I think it uh, just adds like a tiny bit more interest. And what I'm gonna do instead of trying to get my sponge in there, I'm just gonna rinse out that brush I was using really quickly. I'm gonna grab these two lighter colors and I'm just gonna fill it in really fast with one stroke. And even on the job, that would have taken a second. And there we go. We have a nice rounded butterfly. So here we have two sponged butterflies very similar concepts, slightly different shapes. Um, I like them both. This feels very traditional to me and I actually really like it. Um, I love doing butterflies in a thousand different ways on the job, so that's one of the reasons they're so much fun to me. And if you do search through my Instagram, I've done butterflies a thousand different ways. They they look so different every time, but that's the art of it to me and why it's so much fun. I also want to point out that the butterfly shapes you're doing are going to change based on who sits in front of you because no one's face is the same. You know, some people might not have any room here in the middle of their face to do this little connecting uh, stroke that I've been doing and you kind of have to stop right under their eye. You also are going to have people sit in your chair that have a very, very low forehead. When that happens, my butterfly tends to go out this way and I end up with kind of a thicker, more square-like or rectangular shaped butterfly because there's nowhere else to go. You can't go up. So keep in mind that you're gonna have to be a little fluid based on who sits in your chair. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, decorating this butterfly and then options for the center too. I covered some of that in the last video as well, but let's talk about it here. Um, if I do an antenna, this is what it's going to look like. I will take the same color that I used to outline the butterfly and I keep it relatively close to the butterfly wing and I go up and I drop. And that's typically what an antenna looks like when I, I do them. And then obviously I'd be mirroring the other side, but I really rarely do that. I also never, ever, ever anymore, I used to do the butterfly bodies. For me personally, when I do that, they just, the, I'm competing with this curve of the nose and it never looks good. It's always off. It's really hard to do a one stroke that's even here on the curve of the nose. And the alternative is to put it up here on the flat part of the forehead. And then it looks like my butterfly should be up here, right? Because the body's up here instead of down here. So I just really don't like doing it. Um, in part one, I did show you guys I love to do a rainbow. I love to do like a crown. Uh, stencil or, or glitter or anything else but um, if I'm gonna do uh, an antenna it's usually gonna look something like this I would probably on the job uh, still do my little drop down like curve uh, curved little cutie thing on the bottom of this too just because I really like the way that looks another option for the center is doing a gem uh, this is one that I literally just had sitting there, so it doesn't match that well. But you can see this fills up that area really, really quickly, super impactful, really pretty. The kids love it. You can charge extra for gems, especially if you're in a papered face scenario. So that's a great option to fill in that space. I also have many times in the past done um, a double dipped flower and then petals going up my butterflies. So I do wanna finish this butterfly with a few details and a shout out to Chaim Terraselli. He is in a lot of the face painting forums on Facebook and one of my Facebook friends and a very sweet uh, face painter in our community and he specifically asked me to paint him a rainbow butterfly with hearts and stars, I believe it was. So here's your rainbow butterfly and I'm going to put stars on it, which is something I do all the time on the job. Whether I do that in the center or I do stars on the wings, I'm going to use my star blends and I'm going to use my stars and instead of just doing dots, how cool is that? It's so pretty. I love doing this. So this is for you, Chaim. Here is your rainbow butterfly with stars. I hope you like it. And then for your heart, what I'm going to do is use a petal brush. For the center, we're going to do a little floral heart for you, Chaim. So thank you, Chaim, for always being so sweet and being a lovely member of our face painting community. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope this was helpful. And again, if you haven't seen part one, go check out part one. Part three will be coming up next, and that is going to be our elevated abstract floral butterflies. So thank you again. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. Comment down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. All right, so anyone who made it this far, you're going to get a quick little uh, bonus tip. Very often, I will have adults sit in my chair, and they'll be like, I want a butterfly. And after talking to them a little bit, I'll realize they don't want a full face butterfly. They want like a tattoo butterfly, right? Or um, if I, it's a woman often with like full makeup and like eyelash extensions, I'll be like, you want a full butterfly? Like I paint your whole face like a butterfly. And they're like, oh no, I just want a little butterfly. So it happens all the time. So this is what I do. I will usually do this on the cheek 
or on their arm. I'll, I'll say like, well, do you want it on your arm so it's not on your face, you know? And they're like, yes, put it on my arm. Um, or they'll let me do it on their cheek. But this way I'm not like ruining their makeup and their eyeliner and all the stuff, right? Um, so I'm gonna do it on my forehead to show you guys because I obviously have pain everywhere. But this is what I do. I take my uh, Flora or Petal brushes. This one is the Flora the uh, number six. Um, it's like the perfect size for this. And I do a butterfly so fast it blows their mind. Okay, so I press down big for like the first part of the wing and then I do kind of like a second portion of the wing. I flip it, turn it to the side and do a little extension. And then I, same thing, really quick. I go bam, bam, bam. And then I do like a smaller little petal at the bottom. I go and I drag down like that. And then I do this. And I do like the fastest butterfly on them ever. And they freak out every time. For the center, I will often grab you know, my black liner brush and I'll do like black and then I'll do like a little like heart antenna too. Um, but the point is, however you finish it doesn't matter. If you have time, you can put a couple dots on it or spray it with glitter. But using this Flora brush to create a little tattooed butterfly, whether you're doing it on the cheek or on the arm is the easiest thing to do and people are so blown away and so impressed by it that it's a really fun thing to kind of keep in your arsenal. So I hope you guys like that tip and thanks for sticking around uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!